To Revelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best-selling author, marketing and media strategist Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. So as a small business owner, as a rebelpreneur, solopreneur, entrepreneur, or even as a corporate executive, whoever you are listening to this, how do you make decisions? Do you make decisions based on emotions, gut feelings, instincts, feedback, or do you make decisions based on data? The world is becoming data-driven, and you've got to learn how to harness that data to make good decisions based on on facts, based on what's really happening, and here to help us decipher that wonderful world of data is Dr. Denise Gosnell. She is the Chief Data Officer of Datastax, and she applies her experiences from within the graph and machine learning industries to drive more informed decisions with data. She is the author of The Practitioner's Guide to Graph Data, which illustrates how to apply graph thinking to solve complex problems. I can't think of a better person to talk to to try to solve some of these complex problems with data and not with our emotions. So, Dr. Denise Gosnell, welcome to Rebel Purdue Radio. Thank you so much, Ralph. I, uh, I really appreciate that introduction, and I'm uh, looking forward to being on this episode today. Thank you. I'm so pleased to have you. I, and I think this really touches the problem with a lot of business owners, and I, I guess it's not just small business, but corporate entities, nonprofit organizations, even government, health communication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are, are we making decisions based on emotions or are we making them based on facts and the facts come from data so tell us a little bit about uh, i, I want to hear all about that first i want to hear how did you prepare your life and your career to dive so deeply into understanding data what's your story ralph that's a that's a really great story and and probably one of my favorites to tell because having this opportunity to talk to you today is a complete accident if uh, if i'm going to be honest <laughs> Uh, so the, the the origin story of how I got into graph data um, is that I had to take a course to fill a schedule uh, during my master's degree, and this course was called Graph Theory. Now, I'm, I'm not the kind of person who read the textbook before class, so when I heard Graph Theory, I thought we were going to be spending a whole semester kind of doing maybe business intelligence or data visualization, you know, thinking like traditional graphs. Mm. pie charts, bar graphs, those those kinds of graphs. And so I went into the first day of this course kind of dragging my feet, not looking forward to the topic. Uh, But within the first few minutes, Dr. Teresa Haynes, who's one of the world's most renowned graph theorists of our time, she drew a real graph on a board. And she essentially, she drew a dot. So she first started with this dot and she connected it to another dot with a line. And she said, this could be you. And this is a connection to one of your friends. And if you draw out your entire social network of everyone that you know on this board with dots and lines, that's what we really mean by graphs. Hmm. And and that was the first time that I had really taken a moment to understand a new way of thinking, a new way of visualizing the connectedness that really exists within our entire network uh, around the, you know, of how we interact with other people. And it was this, this moment of, uh, I guess, uh, of just like finding a new passionate topic that I really enjoyed. And for the past almost 15 years, uh, I have made that the cornerstone of what I study and build as an engineer. Uh, so from that, uh, I have worked on, uh, using connected data or graph structured data in bioinformatics, telecommunications, logistics. Uh, and that's just a few of the a few of the different applications I've helped to build. But I've been advising teams, uh, you know, hundreds of teams around the world for the past few years 
on how to use their connections and their data to make data-driven decisions like you were mentioning, uh, mentioning earlier. Very fascinating. So, so you actually invented the matrix, right? Sure, I did. I did. Or, or I'm here offering you the red pill or the blue pill, whichever <laughs> way that you would like to, uh, would like to envision that, uh, envision that story. <laughs> that, that is so interesting how, how you kind of stumbled into this and be, and became fascinated by it. And now it is, it is your professional career. I mean, that, that's it just, is. that's an amazing story. Yeah, it's it was that it's that moment that you uh, just kind of accidentally stumbled into uh, into the, the 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 topic or the career that you knew that you were here for, uh, and it was it's it's just been a fantastic journey. It's it's that thing that I do every day that lets the day fly by, and I kind of forget what's happening uh, as the world is passing around because I just love getting deeply ingrained into understanding connected data. And even more passionately, helping other people find find value in how their data is connected. That's really awesome. And literally connecting the dots for people. You know, we use that phrase a exactly. lot. And that's literally what you're yes. doing with with graph data. Now, now, give us the layman's explanation of it, because you, you mentioned graph data. You're thinking I'm thinking, you know, pie charts and stuff like that. You gave us exactly. a, you gave us a peek into a much deeper world. Uh, so tell us how graph mm-hmm. data is changing how humans and computers interact. Well, uh, Ralph, that's a great question. And I would have two examples. And the first one I would love to point to actually is how you and I started our conversation just a few minutes ago. Hmm. We immediately started talking about how we got connected so that we arrived at having this conversation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and everyone around the world tends to talk about and meet new people that way. They're like, oh, I have a friend in common. I met you through this person. And and that's naturally already talking about your world, and how you interact with everybody else by talking about your relationships with other people or your connections with other people. And so that's my favorite part about this topic is that it's already ingrained in how humans interact with each other. And the the new part of uh, the innovation space coming over from technology is the fact that we haven't had a way to represent that in computers until maybe the past 10 years or so. We haven't had an efficient way to do it. Uh, so about maybe 10 years ago or so is when we first saw some of the earliest new inventions and innovations coming out of the Silicon Valley for being able to use connections and relationships between data in a computer in a more efficient way than we had in the past. And so that's why this topic is starting to emerge and people are, are, are kind of learning a little bit more about it. But the, the second example to your question, Ralph, um, is to think about uh, a common application that I imagine most of your audience uses every day, and that would be LinkedIn. Hmm. And so you can think about if you log into LinkedIn, you might start by searching for somebody. So if you went to LinkedIn and you searched for Denise Gosnell, you might find me, and I bet you nine times out of 10, the first thing you're going to do is look at, say, the mutual connection section, or you're going to look at that badge that says first, second, or third connection. And already in these applications that you're using every day, you're using the connectedness between you and anyone else in the world to build this context or to build this story about how you know somebody. And that's enabling people on LinkedIn to understand how they can get a connection to somebody else. Or if they're a second connection with many mutual connections, you probably start painting a picture in your mind about, oh, we probably know some of the same people through this group in my social circle or my professional circle. And uh, that, that specific example of how you use LinkedIn, I think, is probably one of the most popular ways that graph technology and graph data has already transformed and seamlessly changed how we think and interact with technology. Hmm, Very fascinating. And and a couple of things come to mind. The first thing is a few years ago, they were saying it it come up with something like um, six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon or something like that. that, That's kind of what we're talking about here with the connections and, and the relationships between those connections. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just for fun, um, as a part of the book that uh, you mentioned earlier, I went ahead and we we built out the full graph of every movie and every actor 
and we, we kind of solved, here's how you do this, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, uh, just for fun in the, in, in the book that we published recently. Neat. How about that? And, and so then yeah. now, now that's, here's yet another connection and that meets in your book. I haven't read your book yet, but it, it sounds like something I need to pick up and, and look at and really dive into. But we bring into a situation, a, a certain reference point, certain connections. And then mm-hmm. I, I guess maybe another app, uh, another way to think about this is the intersection of ideas, connections between mm-hmm. one industry, how, for example, marketing is done in one particular industry and then making connections with how it's done in another and then looking at areas where that overlaps and then, uh, creating strategies based on the synergy of these many different ways of doing it. Am I explaining it right? Yes. Yes, you are. And that reminds me, um, or it sounds very, very similar to what uh, the day-to-day role of uh, you know anyone working towards transforming their, their company to a data-driven enterprise. It, that sounds exactly like the main challenges uh, that the executives and business leaders of your audience probably have. Hmm. where you've got many silos of data across your company. You have your marketing team, like you were just talking about, Ralph. You also have your sales team. You have your customer success team. And we know as humans that there's a customer who enters your funnel in the marketing department. They go through sales and they become a customer. And so they're working in customer success and support. And so there's a person that goes throughout that entire process. What graph data and graph technologies are helping companies uh, perform, what, what they're helping them do from a digital transformation perspective as they're on their journey to becoming a data-driven enterprise, they're able to stitch together every endpoint across all of these silos of data so that we have that perspective for your customer to understand what their, what their process was like through every funnel and every stage in that journey. And uh, from a... From an enterprise perspective, as you're transforming your your architectures and your your actual databases in your company, that's what some of the most innovative companies are doing today. They're breaking down their silos and they're stitching together the story of how pieces of data are connected across their entire enterprise. Hmm, Very interesting. It also opens up some questions and concerns regarding privacy privacy and Mm -hmm. security. So how can we be sure that, for example, if I'm giving my data to LinkedIn, that they're not going to then take that data and share it with a marketing company or some other company in a way that I don't approve of or in a way that is invasive? That would be a negative example of what we're mm-hmm. talking about rather than a positive. Yeah. And, and Ralph, I, I couldn't agree you more, uh, agree with you more. This, this topic of connecting data together does immediately get into some privacy concerns. And uh, typically I like to advocate for people to understand what you can do with connected data. And then I also like to advocate that uh, instead of clicking that checkbox of I do agree to terms and <laughs> I do agree to these terms, let me through, yeah. that you actually maybe take some time to read what those terms are, because that's that is exactly where that language is hidden. Uh, and, you know, now it comes down to people wanting privacy, but not taking the time to read terms and conditions when they sign up for a service. Right. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword because you do need to take the time to educate yourself on on what people are doing uh, with your data and and making sure that you know where it's going. And that's uh, I think that's a, a part of uh, the the GDPR compliance regulations now that Europe uh, that Europe is has deployed where they're they're extremely strict on users being able to uh, get access to all of their data and the other parties who have uh, who have seen that data so that they can make an informed decision. And uh, I find that to be a very interesting step. Uh, hmm. from a, from a security perspective. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that's an interesting, um, challenge and it, mm-hmm, it's a, it, mm-hmm. it's a challenge because of the, of the power of the technology that, um, it, we can actually do more good with it if, if, if we are, if we use it responsibly, I, I guess it's like fire, right? You, you know, you can yes. bur- you can burn the house down, or you can warm the house, and so it's yes. the responsible use of data that is going to help us get the benefit. Another 
I mean, we could shift to the positive and, and think about what are what are some of the positive ways that this works. And just going back uh, previously, thinking about relationships and connections and how mm-hmm. um, how you and I got together. I went back recently because all the guests on the show are by referral. And so when mm-hmm. I when I yeah. interview someone, part of my process is to ask them, do you know two or three other people that would be a good fit for the show? And by doing that and going back and tracing over the last two years, I found that, but before I lost track, that there's been at least 12 generations and now 13 generations of referral that ultimately led me to you. So if we're talking mm-hmm. about graph data, that's, mm-hmm. that's a pretty substantial web that we're talking about. 12 generations, 13 generations of referral to get to you. And that also means that I had to ask every single time I had to perform every single time and people had to give me referrals every single time for it to work. And if any one of those points failed, you and I wouldn't be here speaking with one another right now. I know. Absolutely. And it's, uh, it's, it's fascinating when you sit back and think about how that one connection you make with another human ends up. Uh, just kind of tapping into their network effect and, and understanding that journey it takes you on. It, it's, it's a very fascinating mental exercise, uh, but also is, uh, you know, as we all know, as business owners, referrals of existing customers tend to find the best next customers. And it's the exact same type of connection that we, we all use for finding new business every day. Exactly. Uh, making sure that you talk to people and, and use their reference network for your, you know, for your next customer. Yeah. I, I always ask for quality people just like you, right? So if I ask well, for quality, I that. If, if I ask for quality people just like you, you're not going to refer people to me that are not quality and not like you. So, mm-hmm. so it, it, this is kind of like a, a, a Darwin uh, survival of the, of the fittest guest, right? <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, the quality of, of the, I mean, theoretically, right? The quality of the guests mm-hmm. should evolve and get better and better and better. As I continue to ask for top quality people from top quality people, the quality of the overall synthesis is just higher. I, I can see why you would get lost in and, this and have a good time with this. Yeah, and and Ralph, you're uh, you're already describing the example that that made graph technology uh, start to become a very very famous way that Silicon Valley companies are building. Uh, you just you just described what we call the Netflix prize. Hmm. This was something that started back in 2009 and is something that I'm sure your entire audience, especially during this time of staying at home, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when, when we're using our various streaming platforms and we're asking for content, kind of like this other content that we like, uh, that, that is the cornerstone case that 10 years ago kicked off the journey of graph technology and graph data becoming you know, such, a, such a cornerstone for everything that people or that engineering teams are deploying. It's, it's that it's that expected side or that expected window when you're online or on an e-commerce website that says you know it's that recommendations section. Hmm. That's Ralph. That's what you just described. You just scri- you just described how do you recommend content or people or or other types of entities according to the history of things that I like or the history of things that I think I want uh, want to understand deeper. And that's, you know, that really is the 10 year journey that has led graph data and graph technology to becoming, uh, to becoming on the stage that it's beginning to, uh, beginning to emerge onto. Yeah. And, and I think the, the trend and the curve is for it to become even more pervasive and even more useful as we continue to, to wield it in a way that is responsible. So that leads me to, to a, an important question. We're talking about enterprise level applications. Mm-hmm. How would this apply mm-hmm. to a, a small business, a, a small business or even an entrepreneurial startup where they are, they are, they, they have a blank canvas. They haven't really co- collected mm-hmm. a lot of data or if they have, they're not using it. What are some ways that they should begin to think about harnessing the power of, of graph, of graph data? Yeah, um, Ralph, that's a, that's a great question. And I have, uh, an example of a way that uh, I have used it at some startups in the past. And then I have a recommendation for your audience on where they should get started. Perfect. Uh, so I'll start. Yeah, I'll start with the first example. So 
Uh, I've been studying graph data for a long time. And uh, I think in 2014, I started working at a startup uh, that was in the healthcare space. And uh, we were, you know, completely transforming how any kind of claim or digital data is passed around in healthcare. And if you think about the healthcare system, you naturally have a network, you have a graph, you have people like us who go to doctors, and we have certain insurance uh, companies, and that doctor works at a certain hospital or business. And so now you're already can kind of picture in your mind that you have a person and that is linked to a doctor and your person is linked to an insurance provider. And, you know, that doctor is linked to the place where they work. So we have a small graph, right? We have a few different connections. And we started building this up for the entire United States. And uh, we, we saw some trends happening in late 2015, early 2016, uh, because we were working with, uh, with uh, CMS, the center of uh, uh, the, I'm forgetting what CMS stands for at this time because it's so popular here in the United States. But we were working with them and uh, combining some data sets together and discovered that there was some pretty interesting behavior happening in South Florida. Uh, I believe it was around the Miami, Fort Lauderdale area, if I'm recalling correctly. And it turns out that there were, uh, there were a, a network of doctors, specifically one doctor, that had a very interesting uh, set of behaviors of patients from around the country who appeared to be traveling. Um, and we're talking about all the way from up in the main, up in Maine, uh, down to lower San Diego and all across the U.S. were traveling down to the Miami and Fort Lauder Lauderdale area to receive care from this doctor. And when you cross-referenced it with uh, the CMS records, it, it turns out that this doctor had received over $20 million in uh, Medicare reimbursement, which mm -hmm. turned out to be for illicit and illegal uh, <laughs> illegal uh, services that had been provided in 2016. So, so, so yeah, I, 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 I was thinking, at, I, I was thinking either, okay, what does the data show here? Either that he is really, yeah. really good. I mean, really good. Yeah. Or he's yeah. a little too good to be true. And, and it turns out the latter. <laughs> too good to be true. Yeah. And it's, it's the network. Uh, it was the network of which patients were coming to see this doctor uh, that, you know, that found some, uh, some behavior that was abnormal. And, uh, and, you know, adding a little bit more data to it kind of helped uh, determine exactly what was happening. And uh, they were able, I do believe that uh, that, that doctor is, is currently in jail for medical, medical fraud. Mm, yeah. Now, so that was, yeah, so that was an example within just healthcare, how a startup I worked at was, uh, was helping to use graph technology in a, in a good for, for good uh, mm. to, to kind of go back to your question earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, well, and, now that opens the door to a, a lot of other useful applications like human trafficking, uh, drugs, mm -hmm. illegal, mm -hmm. all kinds of things going on that you could, you could use data yeah. to kind of map that out and, and, and see those anomalies and, and interpret it and take action against it. Absolutely. And Ralph, that was actually the first, startup uh, that I worked at before the healthcare story. Yeah. Uh, we were, we were using, uh, we were using the, uh, the cell phone network of calling and texting to determine exactly those, uh, those rings that you were just mentioning, mm. uh, rings of human trafficking that were occurring, uh, by people using burner phones. So that we had to have like really quick turnover to detect these, uh, very interesting rings of communication that were popping up as people would, you know, use a burner cell phone to, uh, to make a few calls and then that number would disappear on the network. Uh, but by just looking at the patterns of what cell phone number called or texted other cell phone numbers, uh, this was uh, how we were able to find uh, some of those illicit rings. And this was some work that was happening back in 2012 to 2014 uh, in, in, a, in a startup that was in the telecommunications industry. Very fascinating. So, so the message yeah. is either the message is if you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, you better stop because you're going to get caught. Right. Um, the, the other lesson is if you're a business owner or, a, or directing a, a large corporation or enterprise level application, mm -hmm. uh, you need to figure out how to harness this data and use it in ways that you can enhance your, mm -hmm. your products, your services, add value to your customers and clients. I mean, how great would it be? That once you give your preferences to a brand, they always retain those preferences and you don't have to give the same information 15 different times. That's, that's just going to improve 
the overall uh, customer experience or the patient experience. Exactly. There's just so many different ways that we can so apply this. Exactly. And, and Ralph, I think to the last question you asked me, I, I mentioned I had stories and then I had a recommendation. Yes. And what you just described is exactly my recommendation. And, and how, how natural this conversation is, by the way, to just talk about emerging tech coming out of the Silicon Valley is why I love graph technology. It's, it's so easy to mentally draw these pictures of how the connections in your data are more valuable than just understanding a static property about it. Like, oh, how much money did this individual thing or individual person bring into the company? It's much more value to understand how that person is connected to every piece in your company. And so that really is my recommendation uh, for business owners and, and entrepreneurs out there who are, are trying to understand the, the, the critical piece that they need to bring in in order to transform your company into a data-driven enterprise it's to take a look at using graph technology to specifically be the hub or the connection or the source of truth and knowledge of every piece of data as someone enters your funnel all the way through becoming a happy and successful returning, uh, returning customer. You want to have that centralized place where you are mapping together how the piece of, the piece of the data from marketing feed into uh, another downstream silo and they feed all the way into support. Uh, and et cetera, every piece in between. Uh, and that's the digital transformation trend for the, you know, the Fortune 500 companies that are uh, customers of DataStacks. And that's the work that I do every day to help, uh, to help these companies transform their immensely huge databases into knowledgeable and actionable connected graphs of, uh, of information. Wonderful. And, and with that information in hand, uh, to circle back to the opener, we can make better decisions. We can Absolutely. come up with better strategies, better ways to add value, better ways to innovate. Uh, instead of going with our gut, going with emotion, listening to the, the angels or the devils on our shoulder, we can make good, intelligent decisions. And like they say on the X-Files, the truth is out there. Where is it? It's in it the is. data. <laughs> And it's specifically in the connected pieces that you might not be looking at yet. Yes, yes. Making the connections, that is what it's all about. Wonderful. This has been a very fascinating conversation. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you would like to leave us with? Um, I, I think some of the, the final thoughts and, and words of wisdom that I, I, commonly, uh, I commonly talk about with other people who want to get involved uh, are to start to think about the most important data problems that you have and to ask yourself if understanding the connections between the points of your question are going to help elevate and make your, make your answer more viable. It's always a yes. Um, I would, I recommend you to dig into it and find that yes, uh, because that is exactly where and, and why graph data is going to make your world, uh, make your, your journey to becoming more data driven that much more empowering. And what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you and, and with your company? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, great. Uh, I'm extremely active on Twitter. Uh, my handle on Twitter is Denise K. Cosnell. Uh, follow me there. I'm always posting uh, new demos or uh, new tips and tricks uh, for how to use uh, graph data. Uh, I frequently have lots of conversations there, and so that would be the best way to get a hold of me. Perfect. So we'll we'll put your Twitter link on the Rebelpreneur website so um, our listeners can look you up and get lost in this new world of graph data. Or they'll be getting found. Ah, right. <laughs> I have been speaking with Dr. Denise Gosnell. She is the chief data officer of DataStacks, and she applies her experience from within the graph and machine learning industries to drive more informed decisions with data. She's the author of The Practitioner's Guide to Graph Data, which illustrates how to apply graph thinking to solve complex problems. Denise, thank you so much for being on Rebelpreneur Radio today and raising the level of our understanding about graph data. I really appreciate it. It was an honor, Ralph. Thank you so much for having me. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.